Important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is February 16th, 2022. Here is the feisty news for women. In 2014, Sweden was the first country to institute a feminist foreign policy. A feminist foreign policy is a strategic plan for how international relations and foreign policy could support gender equality around the world. Margot Wallström, who was the foreign minister of Sweden at the time, stated that the country's diplomatic efforts would stand against the system, systematic and global subordination of women. Although her announcement was initially met with laughter, the number of countries carrying out a feminist foreign policy is now increasing. Spain, France, Canada, Mexico, Luxembourg, Libya, and now Germany all join Sweden's pioneering concept, declaring that the country's diplomacies will place girls and women at the center of their work. Wallstrom expressed that a feminist foreign policy would focus on the three R's, rights, representation, and resources, examining whether girls and women have the same human rights as boys and men whether women are represented throughout local and federal government, and whether a national budget confronts gender matters and has enough resources allocated to address girls' and women's issues. What does this mean for women? Everything. Women who once felt that their needs, rights, and desires didn't matter now have a very public pronouncement that we do matter. People in high places are checking for us. That's positive. <laughs> In other news, two women in Finland are taking responsibility for the global mental health of citizens around the world by organizing a mass meditation that aims to lead our society to de-stress and release internal trauma. The virtual event, Embracing World Distress and Structural Trauma, will take place this Saturday on February 19th. I have the organizers of the global event here with us today. Let's welcome Ellen Maria Sedarvarta and Julia Silverio to the show. These ladies are leading the global meeting with a mission to introduce a healing principle they call somatics. Ladies, can you explain what somatics is and why it is so important to the mental health of our society? Yeah, you know, somatic is this approach where we see the whole picture. So we also can talk about the individual healing, but in the context of being part of bigger structures. And you know, our body is uh, shaped by the norms, everything, how we move, how we dress up, how we do. And to come to that awareness uh, through our body and actually notice how I'm part and how it affects me personally and get more aware of people around me. It gives another possibility to change not only our thoughts and how we perceive the world but also how we act and how we uh, to act from a point that is not only reactive or educated so it's like bringing it all together do you have something to add julia no i think you beautifully made it all together i think somatics it's focusing on like this inner world of ours which is so, so much focused like shaped and uh, being created by the social norms we are living in as you were explaining and having this like trustworthy space to really face those um like well those those norms we are kind of creating in everyday life and having this possibility to to recreate to recreate my own self to be free of those norms which are not um serving us anymore I think that's that's somatics for me kind of being born every day again and again and that's that's beautiful and on the other and hand freedom. like <laughs> sorry on the other hand like if we only like creating healing for ourselves like there are so much suffer and harmful structures in the world and a lot of oppression and of course that needs to be healed but if we only heal ourselves and not also bring it to an act for a uh, social change or structural change, then the healing is kind of, 
it's, it's not it's, healing. No, I think. <laughs> they, it yeah, might, it might only su- halfway. <laughs> yeah, it might support uh, some few privi- more privileged people to have more the pri- access to your privilege. But if you don't bring it to wider range, then then what? So this is one question that we bring yeah. together. And we claim that the healing is actually like fulfilled when you actually start doing things socially and in the environment you live in. So the healing is kind of, it happens inside and you focus on the inner world, as I was explaining and we were, we were discussing, but also then it would and should through this freedom, through this like change, it should also happen uh, in the outer world, in your actions, in your ways of facing other people, in, in our actions of facing the the social uh, structures or inequalities of this world, which are present and needed to be changed. Thank you so much for sharing your work to improve our society, ladies. You can attend the Global Meditation event this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern European time. That's 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Visit their Facebook events page to learn more. In other news, Florida State Senator Lauren Book, a victim of child sexual abuse turned advocate, has been victimized again, this time by someone trying to extort her by threatening to reveal new photos that were stolen from her. During the investigation, she learned that the images of her and her husband that had been stored on her phone had been bought and traded online since 2020. The senator told reporters that although she hates that it happened, She is fully aware that she can do something about it. The Senator sponsored a bill last month that is set to strengthen Florida's revenge porn law by making it a felony to buy, sell, or trade stolen sexually explicit images from someone's phone or other digital devices. It would also make disseminating, altered, or creating sexually explicit images known as deepfakes a felony. For a fresh perspective on the revenge porn laws, we have Arizona internet attorney, Ruth Carter. Known for their daring antics and outgoing personality, Ruth is an authority on intellectual property and internet law. Ruth, my first question is, if a woman is a victim of revenge porn, what should she do to fight back? Thanks for having me, Tierica. So these situations are kind of complicated because revenge porn is a state level law in most places. So you have to look at what the law says, where you live to find out if you've been the victim of a crime and what your options for recourse are. Because like in some states, if you voluntarily share your photo with your significant other and they turn around and share it with others, that's not a crime. It should be but it isn't in certain places. Um, But on the flip side, in some states, just threatening to share someone's nude without their consent is a crime, which it should be. So you have to look at what the law says where you live to see whether or not a crime has actually happened. Now, in the Florida situation, that Senator was the victim of extortion or at least attempted extortion. Now that's a crime everywhere. So even if you can't get the person on revenge porn, which they don't call it revenge porn in the law, they have, they, you know, they pick a more eloquent way of saying it, but we say it's revenge porn because that's what it is. Um, but if extortion is illegal everywhere. So if someone says, you know, pay me this much money or I'm going to post your nudes online, send them to your parents, send them to your boss, whatever they're threatening, that's a crime. So call up your police station and say, here's what's going on. I need to report a crime. It also gets a little bit more challenging if you're dealing with somebody out of state or worse, out of country, because they may not be able to do much if you're out of country. If you're if they're out of state, you may have to call up the state where the person lives, which means you have to know where they live. It gets complicated fast, as you can tell. But what happens it, to the person who does something like this? Again, depends on the law that applies. So in some places, it's a misdemeanor and other places, it's a felony. And depending on the totality of the circumstances, you may also have a 
civil case against the person, assuming they're worth going after, because if that person has no money um, and there's no insurance that's going to kick in and cover, it's not worth suing them because you're because even if you win, you're never going to collect and you still have to pay your lawyer on top of it. Wow. OK, Ruth, I wasn't expecting that, but really, it makes me wonder. Is this a legal process that's even worth going through? You know, that's something that you have to decide what makes sense for you. I think it's best for people to make educated decisions. So I recommend that you collect some data about what the law is, you know, to call the police non-emergency number and talk to somebody about what can I do in this situation? And then you get to decide for yourself if it's worth going through the criminal legal process and hoping that something comes out of it. Or you can decide to go with the court of public opinion and put that person on blast. I recommend you be careful with that. Make sure you're only telling the truth. I don't want to see somebody um, be accused of defamation by somebody who is being an ass and threatening to post their nudes online. Um, and then you can decide to brush it off. I mean, if somebody told me, hey, I have naked pictures of you and I'm going to post them online, I'd be like, I see me naked every day. If you see me in a bathing suit, you probably have a good idea of what I look like naked it's not going to phase me. You, you send it to my mom, I'd be like, yeah, she knows what I look like naked too. She gave birth to me. So, you know, I think when you take the wind out of their sail, it's a really effective way to just shut it down. And thank goodness, I think revenge porn is going to be so last year's news you know, kind of like remember like when like politicians smoking marijuana was a big deal and now it's like whatever like you know most people have tried it as long as it's not impacting your ability to do your job you know th that's going to be revenge porn you'd be like oh naked picture they'd be like yeah we're all human beings we know what a body looks like thank you so much Ruth, for your fascinating insights i understand Sometimes we need to save our energy for the bigger battles. And sometimes these type of ratty men need to know that they hold no power at all. Revenge porn is a form of abuse. Lashing out in anger because you can't have the type of relationship you want with the woman. The man is hurting, so he wants to hurt her. He wants to sabotage her future, but like Ruth says, it only holds the power you give it. Multiple celebrities have had their new photos leaked and they're still working, still thriving. Only a ratty man would believe that showing a woman's body publicly would damage her success. For the most powerful women, there's nothing you can do to stop her. So try if you want to. She's just gonna laugh at you from up high while you stare at her from below. This is a message to every man out there. To any man that's out there contemplating sabotaging a woman's progress because you cannot create progress of your own, stop that you should not try to sabotage a woman's success because you're jealous and you know you can't do what she does. That is the definition of real weakness. Focusing all of your efforts on making her look bad instead of using that willpower to make yourself great is stupid. It's much better to stand with a powerful woman as she rises than to try to break her down. Here's a novel idea for all men under the sound of my voice. If you see an, an amazing woman like Senator Lauren Book and your heart skips a beat because you know she won't allow anything to stand in the way of her success, instead of hurting her because you're jealous, support her. Be the one person she knows will always be there for her. Enjoy the energy that she brings to the table instead of being afraid that the power she possesses will overshadow yours. If you know for a fact that she is more awesome than you are, hey, accept it and celebrate it, cling to it. Take all of the strength you possess and give it to her so that she enlarges her vision and she has you to thank for it. What is your reward? You get to stand beside a powerful woman. Most men would break under that pressure. If you're a man who wants to learn how to be the type of man a powerful woman wants and treasures, order my relationship book for men. How to Love a Powerful Woman by me, Tierica Patterson. Yes, it's available on Amazon. Uh-oh, time for a break. 
Step celebrities friend of Shakari Richardson blasting the Olympic Committee for a double standard. Which celebrity popped up with a brand new baby what was never seen anywhere pregnant? Find out the answers to these questions right after this. See you in a minute. Hi, my name is Ginger King. I'm a cosmetic chemist and brand owner for Fan Love Beauty. Fan Love Beauty is an inspirational beauty brand. We develop beauty products for people who inspire, educate, or entertain the society. The inspiration of my clean beauty brand, Fan Love Beauty, came when um, my celebrity crush, business mentor, Damon Jung of Shark Tank, was with me at a meeting. And he took out a lip balm in front of me. I was like, Damon, if there's something that's so close to you, that's in your pocket, on your lips, it has to be mine because I'm a cosmetic chemist. We also donate part of the proceeds to Suicide Prevention Foundation because we believe if people can stay longer and using beauty products that are healthy and good for them, they will have even more contribution to the society. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? The Winter Olympics became a bit more complex when we learned that Russian figure skater Kamila Baliva tested positive for tremet, 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 forget it, a banned heart medication that works by increasing blood flow to the heart and limiting rapid, move, rapid swings in blood pressure. 15-year-old Camila was allowed to compete in the Olympics even after the banned drug was found in her system. The judges who decided to allow her to continue to compete argued that banning her would cause her irreparable harm. After hearing about Camila's past to compete, American track and field sprinter Shakari Richardson went to Twitter to complain about the double standard. Can we get a solid answer on the difference of her situation and mine, Richardson tweeted? My mother died and I can't run and was also favored to place top three. The only difference I see is I'm a black young lady. Is that the only difference? Today we have with us Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, a medical toxicologist and the co-medical director of the National Capital Poison Center in Washington, D.C. Dr. Kelly, what happened here? Are Shakari's claims of a double standard valid? Why was she banned from competing in the Olympics after a dirty drug test, but Camila wasn't? So first of all, T. Erica, thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show today. This is great. Um, this is a really tough case. So in a lot of these cases where there's doping involved, people are older. This girl is only 15 years old. And because of that, the World Anti-Doping Agency and some of the other regulatory bodies don't really have set standards for how to deal with people of that age. They're considered protected persons. And so that was one of the reasons why this arbitration board decided not to uh, prevent her from skating in the Olympics tonight. Or uh, they, they basically said, she's a protected person, she's a minor, you know, and this means that she probably didn't do this on her own accord. She probably didn't do this on her own volition. And that was one of their main reasons. The other thing was that this drug test, you know, even though we just heard about it um, in the last few days, the drug test that she that she took that was positive, that occurred back in December. And for whatever reason, the results were only released a few days ago. So this girl, this 15 year old girl doesn't really have the time to go through uh, to have her own legal team look at this or address it or anything else. And so that was one of the other reasons why the arbitration board said, we'll just ignore it for now. She can still skate. Okay, well, that makes sense, Dr. Kelly. Can you tell us a little bit more about the difference between performance enhancing drugs and recreational drugs? Where's the line drawn? Okay, Tierica, that's a great question. So, you know, drugs affect the body in different ways. And even things that are available over the counter can be dangerous if you use them incorrectly. And so there's a very fine line because a lot of the drugs that we use for clinical disorders in the US can have per per performance enhancing effects. So things that you wouldn't think. I mean, I think we've all heard about anabolic steroids and bodybuilders and, you know, the, and then using those sort of things. But even things that are available by 
by prescription, even over the counter in the US can be performance enhancing. So some examples, so asthma medications. Okay, so just your regular one of the mill inhaler for asthma, you can get one that's a prescription called albuterol, or you can get one over the counter. Um, Primatine Mist has an over the counter variety. And those medications open up your airways, but they also make your heart rate go faster and they make you a little jittery and they make you a little anxious. And that could actually make somebody run faster or have more physical activity because their heart rate is way, is way up. So again, these products are in some cases over the counter. Cough and cold products are another great example. The same thing, they work as decongestants and they, you know, they clear out your sinuses and stuff when you have a cold, but they also can make your heart rate race. And so again, that's why those are banned. So those are, they're not, they're not the traditional stimulants like cocaine or methamphetamine or whatever else that we all know should not be used during um, performance during sports, but these are things that can also affect your body's ability to, um, you know, to endure exercise. So there are the stimulant drugs like we talked about just now. There's also steroids and we all know about those. And, you know, some steroids are also used for medicinal purposes too. Steroids and growth hormones, even insulin. So insulin is, is a medication that's commonly used by diabetics. You probably all know someone who's diabetic and on insulin, but insulin also affects the way that your muscles um, use energy. And so an athlete could theoretically use insulin to just have a uh, different energy metabolism. And so that's why insulin is also considered a performance enhancing drug. So it's a very fine line. I mean, there, there certainly are athletes who are diabetic or who have other medical conditions. And in those cases, they will need to have an exemption to use those drugs. Thank you so much for educating us today, Dr. Kelly. It was great speaking with you. If anyone needs more information about the dangers of poison or drugs, where should they go? Thank you so much again for having me. I had such a great time. And yes, we are always here to help you. Poison centers are available 24-7. Um, you can always find us by going online, www.poison.org or calling 1-800-222-1222. Did you catch the celebrity on the cover of British Vogue holding an adorable baby girl? Yes, it was the beautiful supermodel Naomi Campbell holding her first child. While we are so excited for her, um, everybody's scratching their heads wondering where the baby came from. Naomi was seen a few weeks ago walking the runway during New York's Fashion Week with not so much as a fupa. Where did the baby come from? Naomi says, she wasn't adopted, she's my child. Who was the pappy? When were you pregnant? Where did the baby come from, Naomi? <laughs> Wrong answers only in the comments. Leave a comment with your ideas. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. And remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Feisty, feisty. Feisty, feisty. The Feisty News for Women.